Behind every good superhero is a plethora of nefarious supervillains and a dead relative, like say an uncle or something. Let's call him Ben for the sake of argument, but then let's kill him again and again and again on film. And if you have all that, you have a great hero, and that's why Spider-Man is one of the greatest superheroes of all time. His incredible rogues gallery and his incredibly dead Uncle Ben. But not every villain can be a Green Goblin or a Venom or a Kraven the Hunter. Look, I mean, even Stan Lee is fallible. I invented Spider-Man but I also made some real trash. Sometimes they just phone it in, which is exactly what happened with these deeply dumb bad guys. And on today's episode of The Dan Cave, we're celebrating the best worst Spider-Man villains of all time. Spider-Side. Look, the Clone Saga was unequivocally one of the worst comic book storylines of all time, but at least it gave us the abomination known as Spider-Side for this episode. And honestly, he looks like someone's DeviantArt page was bitten by a radioactive spider, and then shitty Mega Man meets Spider-Man fanfic was brought to horrible, wretched life. Kind of like T-1000, but lousier, Spider-Side seemingly can't be killed, and he's able to reform his body even after being dismembered. He's basically the herpes of Spider-Man villains, and no amount of riding horses on the beach will put an end to him. The Iguana. One of Spider-Man's classic villains is the Lizard, a scientist named Kurt Connors whose quest for knowledge turned him into a literal monster. One of Spider-Man's lamest villains is the Iguana, a villain who's literally just Kurt Connors' pet iguana that was turned into a weird were-lizard by a science ray. It would gain human intelligence by night, it could command other reptiles, had a hypnotic stare, and it was basically just the Tab Cola version of the lizard. Spider-Man turned into quite literally a cold-blooded killer, though, when he blasted Iguana with that same science ray that Kurt Connors did, causing the Iguana to explode and die. Jesus Christ, Peter! Aren't you a scientist, too? What the hell, man? The Spot. This guy's basically what would happen if the old Acme brand portable holes from Looney Tunes became a D-list Spider-Man villain. This guy was a scientist who was trying to replicate Cloak's teleportation powers, and his greatest triumph was tricking Spidey into punching himself in the face via the old sternum face hull switcheroo, which I promise is not a sex move. He's basically just this douche weasel with a chest face portal, and he tricks Spider-Man into fisting himself. Okay, actually, no, maybe that is a sex move. Ew. Hypno Hustler. If you combine the hypnotic illusions of Mysterio with all of the cocaine in New York City, then you'd get Hypno Hustler, a musician that looks like a cyborg version of James Brown. And alongside his band, The Mercy Killers, he uses mind controlling instruments to convince audiences to hand over their wallets. Now, if only Jay Z had that when he convinced people to pay for that garbage fire they call Tidal. You're crazy for this one, Jay. Hove? Walrus. So what do you do if you're a dumb as rocks cab driver and your creepy uncle takes you to his basement and then conducts mutagenic experiments on you to give you the proportionate strength, speed, and agility of a walrus? Well, you make a shitty costume, you become a supervillain and call yourself the walrus. You know, that old chestnut. That old, holy shit, this guy actually managed to defeat the defenders by beating them up with a literal tree chestnut. But then again, this villain was so crappy, Spider-Man managed to defeat him with a single boop on the nose. You know because comics. Critical Mass. What if you combine the large mutant obesity of the blob with Peter Parker's fourth grade classmate? Well, you'd get Critical Mass, a pink and purple Shrek of a man who can shoot explosive force from his fingertips. Hey, why don't they just call him Finger Blast? What's upsetting is that he and his band of baddies, and yes, that's what they called themselves, actually managed to fight off Wolverine and Spider-Man until the mutant child that they'd kidnapped set off a massive explosion, destroying the warehouse that Critical Mass and his goons were in. It's a shame that the script for this issue wasn't also in that warehouse, so it wasn't destroyed before it made it to the printer, because he's that stupid. Swarm. What can be said about this Nazi scientist who was eaten alive by Africanized bees, then brought back to life as a swarm of evil bees in the shape of a man that can't be said better by Nick Cage in The Wicker Man? Not the bees! <laughs> you said it, Nick. Out of my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Kangaroo. 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 Does whatever a kanga. Okay, I see why they didn't give this zealous idiot his own theme song. Guys, this dingus used to study kangaroos in Australia, living among them and eating like them, and he became a boxer because there's no money to be made in kangarooology. As for his powers, he's slightly better at kicking and jumping than a normal dude, and even when the evil Dr. Jonas Harrow gave him special jump jets to make him jump, and kick even better, he was still worthless. He died a horrible death. He was disintegrated in Hudson Nuclear Laboratory's radiation room. And honestly, until a recent presidential phone call, I thought that he was the most damaging thing to US-Australian relations in the last hundred years. I was bigly wrong. Typeface. 
The enemy of people who are sexually aroused by Helvetica and triggered by Comic Sans everywhere. Typeface is a US Army vet turned sign maker turned super villain who kind of super glued a bunch of letters to his face and tried to kill his own boss after he lost his job. I don't know. He wasn't all bad though. I mean, sure, he tried to kill Spider-Man by throwing exploding letters at him like you do, but he eventually teamed up with old Webhead to take down the Spider Hybrid, which is not just a Prius that Spider-Man drives. Actually, you know what? No, he still sucks. Let's just go back to piling on this walking billboard. Big Wheel. You guys remember Axel from Twisted Metal, the guy who's like, I'm stuck between two tires, my life is terrible. Remember how deeply unsettling he was? Well, Spider-Man actually beat Twisted Metal to the punch with a far crappier version in 1978. Jackson Axel Wheel, that's his actual name. Jackson Wheel was a corrupt businessman who bought a giant armored wheel from the Tinkerer and started his new life in crime as Big Wheel! I'm not joking. In reality, he was basically just a giant Ferris wheel or a roulette wheel that was shitty at embezzling. And if we're being totally honest, the tire from Rubber is way more terrifying than Jackson Wheel ever was. This guy was being blackmailed by a guy who had a rocket skateboard. How shitty do you have to be to let the guys from Rocket Power turn supervillains get one up on you like that? Come on, dude. And those, my friends, are the best worst Spider-Man villains ever created. But tell me, which is your favorite? Who would you like to see appear in Spider-Man Homecoming? Let me know in the comments below and give me your best worst thumbs up while you're there. Oh. Now be sure to like and subscribe or else you might miss next week's show about the story of a pregnant woman in a Louisiana parish facing life-threatening diabetes and her strong immigrant son who has to stop Michael Shannon from drilling to the center of the earth in Man of Steel Magnolias. Until next time, keep on digging. Now let's open up the old mailbag, shall we? At Panzer Fred asks, what's your stance on potato on pizza? Huh, interesting question, Fred. Are we talking like roasted chunks of potato on top of pizza? Because that seems like a redundant carb. We already have that delicious crust. But if it's a French fry, though, I could be convinced because French fries are always welcome in any mouth-based endeavor in my life. But if it's just potatoes as a topping, like unless I'm Matt Damon from The Martian, I'm gonna pass. But tell me, what do you guys think about potato on pizza? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time.